Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video on Marvel Contest of Champions. This video is focused on a noob's guide in how to complete Easy Path on Labyrinth of Legends. In this video, I'll be sharing my experience as well as tips and tricks and helpful sites and information you need to know when doing your first ever run on Easy Path in Labyrinth of Legends. There's three key things you need to know about Labyrinth of Legends. Number one, there are special global nodes that you need to watch out for. The second thing is the hit pull of those champions increase now initially in the beginners run if you go for the run that we're going to talk about today you'll only come across the one three million champion bar maestro which is a given but most of the others about 1.5 mil hit points and the third thing being if you've got anything that's 565 as in a five star 565 you will find it's a little bit more easier let's kick off the guy by talking about our first section which is team setups synergies as well as these nodes here and in particular increasing the enraged timer for a lot of this video i'm going to be referring back to information on the mcc guide blog this is a fantastic site that was put together as information about doing a labyrinth for legends run some of the information i'm going to cover but also like i said go to the link in the description they will give you a lot more information on the subject mark of the labyrinth global buff is pretty annoying it basically allows the enemy to evade at the same time stun from time to time at the point of you being hit yeah it's not particularly pleasant and the same thing with the enraged timer once enraged the attack increases yeah not stuff that you is going to be too pleasant that's why the whole aspect is about increasing the enraged timer and that's usually by increasing the amount of attack you do and this is usually a attributed to a change and improvement with your synergy so if you've got lots of different champions that improve things with regards to attack then you're more than likely going to hit over the 2000 minimum attack that's required which can be seen in the opening screen when you battle against so it'll say your attack that should be over 2000 in order to benefit from the increased enraged timer also word of warning don't rely too much on your parries because as you can see limba not good because it basically means that your parry is going to rot away the length of time you're able to parry is going to rot away if you need to rely on your parry it's because that you just the fight becomes quite unpredictable and i had it a lot of times with lag with some shots whiffing that i'm like man i need to rely a bit too much on my parry so what champions are good for labyrinth for legends well as you can see stark spidey and blade were two champions for me to use now i'm not going to say that they're going to be the champions all the time with further runs that you can use that's another story for another day but for an initial clear side of things having blade and having stark spidey are excellent choices but there are some others to note down including stark spidey and blade ghost medusa awakened star lord awakened domino corvus proxima awakened gwenpool sabertooth archangel and omega red Please note, with other champions being added into the game, there may be more scope for usage in Labyrinth for Legends. So keep vigilant and have a look to see in Google as well as YouTube where people are grinding out these champions in what different content. The mastery setup I currently have is situated around several different things. So we've got to begin with lots on precision. So we want to increase critical rating. The same thing with opening up standard precision and therefore we've got more aspects of things with critical damage because that's what we want to do crit damage crit rating crit damage crit rating goes hand in hand and as well with courage and also with glass cannon so we're reducing down the health to maximize our attack it's all the emphasis on attack with having blade in the squad my positioning around deep wounds is a lot stronger now people may change that if they've not got a strong bleed champion that they're utilizing for the whole aspect of labyrinth for legends they may opt to shift a lot of that particular deep wounds into other sections maybe even going more into lesser cruelty and maybe adding it into another section it's always going to work to your strengths the same thing with having medusa it could be all about extended fury it could be about other aspects and other champions but you know assassinate uh, or assassin at rank five yeah i feel strongly about this being put in there moving over to the defense recovery yeah not really needed i mean probably knocked out but the same same token block proficiency opening up to perfect block you make those mistakes you need those two things there in order to keep yourself in the game but granted with a 565 you're going to find it a little bit easier than other champions which would just be absolutely knocked out you know the four star withstanding the might of red skull or red 
Hulk even in Labyrinth of Legends? Man, not likely. As well, moving into the proficiencies, we've then got parry. That then goes into the usual limbo, going into dexterity, which is a given. But the main thing is stupefy. We want to try and increase the amount of stun as well. Not that it's going to make much difference if you're using it a bit too much and utilizing limbo. It's still all about trying to create the best mastery for Labyrinth for Legends for me and the champions that I have. Your experience may vary, but this could work out well for bleed related champions. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty things about item consumption. So I had a few health potions and revives left over from the Halls of Healing event. By the way, if Halls of Healing come on, make sure you grind them out. But I've put together a really helpful, easy guide that's a, a free guide of how to grind out health potions and revives for free. The link is in the description below. It goes hand in hand with this video as well as another video as well. But the fact is 2000 units were spent. Few mistakes that I've made in there was pretty much costly. And the annoying fight against Colossus with the 3 million health points wasn't exactly pretty, but the Maestro fight was a pain in the butt. But do watch out for that and you'll probably get my thinking around that situation. Let's touch on playing style. So the way that you go against each opponent. There's going to be specifics which I'll talk about in a moment of how to build up certain things like special attacks and, and how these particular champions function. But the fact is the best way to get through this is through intercepting. If you're not very good at intercepting, then that's something you really need to work on. If you want to limit down your spend, then you've got to learn to intercept. Sometimes it doesn't always come off. Sometimes you feel that the AI is a little bit more intelligent than it used to. But the fact is you've got to give it a go and you've got to see it through to the end. I was about 10 champions in. I was thinking to myself, do I want to continue on? And the answer is yes, continue on uh, regardless. As long as you've saved up enough units and health potions and revives, you should be able to get through this. But intercepting is really important unless you want to take it a little bit easier and have a 565 champion that is going to be able to withstand the might of these 1.5 mil to 3 mil champions. Or if you've got Blade, which has got that regen ability, that can be really beneficial for you. Let's quickly touch on device tips. So what's the best device to play with? At the moment, it's an iPhone. I am going to be trialing out some more advanced Android based devices to see if they are much cop with going up against difficult content like Labyrinth for Legends. Why? Because it's responsive. It's also about it being quicker than normal. Unless you've got an Android device that's been overclocked. iPad Pros are usually quite good and responsive to certain types of situations and the game does function absolutely amazingly on them. But like I said, I'll be trying out some more high tech Android devices fairly soon to give you an idea whether or not there is a real decent scope to grind out on these devices. Please remember as well, being close to a Wi-Fi router is a good idea. Clear your cache in your devices. Make sure you've got plenty of room so the device is functioning well and make sure the device isn't overheating and clean your screen. Wipe it on your shirt and then hopefully it won't have too much smudge marks. But remember to regularly clean your phone just so that the response is there because it's a smartphone at the end of the day. And if your greasy hands are all over it, then it's not going to be great. What other issues are there? Well, boredom. I got incredibly bored playing this and that's no disrespect to the developer and the game. But the fact is it does go on a little bit longer. Some people have completed this in a short amount of hours. Others have come back to it at a later date. It took me in total six hours to do, but I had to have a break during it. And yeah, like I said, some fights go on for about 20 minutes. Others are very much handled very quickly. And it is a case that you could become bored. And it was one of the things, reasons that I decided not to do this anytime soon. It was a good chunk of my day wasted. Thank God I wasn't working that day. Otherwise, that would be incredibly painful. Yeah, live streaming it on YouTube is a nice interactive thing. But at the same time, if you're distracted by what people are saying and you can't focus on the game, then sometimes it does distract your attention. So do bear in mind that also there could be some whiffing of attacks and things that would frustrate you. So do take this with a pinch of salt. Try and find something you've enjoyable. Put a podcast in on the background whilst you're playing this and focus your time and attention to this as well. Let's quickly talk about the champions that you face off against on the easy path. In total, there are 18 champions. You start off with the Red Hulk 
and it's basically sticking it to the L1. Intercept and bait as best you can because that's going to see you through quite well. Old Man Logan, yeah, it's all about the L1. Watch out for double moves on his heavy attack. It's something that I've always fallen into the trap of. The fact that it comes in two movements against you, yeah, quite annoying. If best you can with Electra, try and stick it to the L2. It's more easier to evade. I know that's easier said than done, but the L2 is a little bit easier if you're not too good with the projectiles of the L1. Miss Marvel, yeah, L1's easier to evade, but keep your distance because as soon as you get hit by those kind of beam attacks, it's not too great. Unstoppable Colossus, man, every time he hits up that Unstoppable, you know, I always parry and then step back because at the end of the day, it's not going to be great to hit off against. Yeah, you can keep your distance, intercept when the Unstoppable buff has gone, but, you know, if you've got a little blade and you've got that uh, synergy with, uh, with the Mystic, which can be quite helpful for that. You go against an Adaptoid, bear in mind it's Rhino based attacks, so watch out for the L1, uh, Rhino attack on the L1. And then you've got Colossus, this is the 3 mil, and it takes forever, it really does. Um, Stark, Spidey did help out with that one, so yeah, um, I felt that was quite, that's quite a good one. It depends what, what champion you've got. Of the ones that we've discussed, use them best you can, but it's like 3 mil, so it's not great. With Falcon, push to an L2 if possible. L the L1 is a projectile based attack. Not great to go up against as it's very difficult to avoid that whatsoever. So yeah, stick it to the L2 and you'll be absolutely fine. Comes to Gamora, push to L1. Uh, L1's easy to evade. I don't like the way the L2 comes at you. Um, but it's yeah, easier to do an L L1 evade than it would be anything else. And then you're in straight again. One thing that I like to do in any case is just build up the enemy to the specific special attacks and then evade away from them and then come back in as well. That usually helps out and means I don't have to parry or, or kind of intercept quite as much. Magic, yeah, Blade is a beast for this against the uh, with the danger sense taking off. Fa absolutely fantastic. War Machine, Projectile Evade, yeah, uh, not great as uh, we want the L2, but if you're not great at avoiding the L2, then you're gonna have to really think about the best way to play it. I use Blade for this because obviously it regeneration, so I could regen any health that I might mess up with the evade on the L2, and obviously the L1, eating the L1 wasn't great. Ant-Man, oh, that is gonna take a long ass time, but I went with the L1. I tried to push him to the L1 and avoid that. Not great with the L2 personally, so always play to your weaknesses and Stick it to the L1. Yes, it's going to be a long fight. Glancing is going to be annoying, but good luck to you. Deadpool X-Force. Yes, L1, but watch out for the power gain. As soon as you get the champion down to a certain amount of health, power gain is going to be annoying against that, so watch out for that. With Daredevil, L1, and encourage the heavy attack. And remember, it's uh, it's a champion that you know, isn't, isn't great. It's not the Netflix one, so... Watch out for your projectile attacks against that guy. And watch out for the evades as well. But um, that's what I was doing. I kind of went into a heavy attack. Waited for him to do a heavy attack and then hit on through. But always kept him at his L1. Don't advise like sticking on a parry and a, a kind of a block each time. But it's, it's up to you how you want to play it. Venom, L1. He's very aggressive. I personally absolutely hate Venom to go up against. I love the champion to play as an offensive and attacking format. But to go up against in the defensive format, yeah, I'm just absolutely terrible uh, because it's just a big scary monster that's coming towards you and I'm just not very good with the timing the evades from that champion so I always try to keep it to an L1 rather than L2 because I don't like the way it jumps over at you it's a, it's not great Iron Fist L1 yeah uh, this is the easier of the fights against Iron Fist and then going to Civil Warrior L1 yeah I find it a little slightly annoying because of the armor up uh, L2 is not too bad, but I like sticking it to the L1 and repeating that process with most champions. And then on to Maestro. Now I have done a separate video for this, which a link will be on the, in the description about how to avoid the L1, uh, which isn't always great. To try and avoid that, there's beam of lights type. There's three beams of light that come towards you, which you just don't like. There's initial kind of evade, and then there's three more evades. If you can, try and push the geezer to the L2. The L2 is a lot more easier to avoid 
and using blade against this champion was a good option now granted you might may not have blade but the fact is you would just have to get play to the best champion you have at 565 uh, Doggy diggity dave used a captain marvel for the first clear and you know other people have used the champions like ghost the list goes on so you know it's not always perfect but you know always play to your weakness if you've got a strong 565 make sure it's one of the ones in the list and you should be able to get through this it will be a struggle guys it really will but i'm sure you will get through it so sticking to those special attacks evading for l1 and l2 being the best method so there we have it guys that has been a guide to labyrinth of legends the easy path for beginners if you're a right noob like me then you need something that's a bit more easier to understand and really kind of get the idea that if you're not overly skilled at the game then you need to play to your weaknesses and try to make sure that you smash through stuff Largely, it's all about having a 565 in order to make sure that your grind is a little bit less taxing on your unit spend and health potion usage. But I have put helpful, helpful guides down in the description, which is the evading methods for Maestra and also when it comes to grinding out health potions as well as revives for free. So hopefully those videos are helpful. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Shout out to MCOC blog guides because it's been a great source to kind of go to and refer to with information. So as just going across and giving that a little bit of a look. And hopefully your grind in this particular game mode is fruitful. I will be returning back to finish off this fairly shortly, probably in the next couple of months, once I've got variant done. But in any case, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Subscribe for more Marvel Contest of Champions-based content. I've been Rich the Man, and I shall catch you in the next one. Goodbye for now.